So we just had the hearing on H.R. 40, which is the reparations Reparation. bill. Um, and I think Cory Bush is maybe the only member of Congress who's really talking directly about reparations. Uh, this is something that I, I feel like there, there's a couple of issues in the leftist circles, even not just liberals, but that leftists are bad with. It. I'd say it's trans issues and it's reparations. These are the two issues that I feel like people are are too afraid to be bold when it comes to this issue. So as a member of Congress, how would you advance these issues, in particular reparations, which is now finally getting hearings, hearings which in and of itself, that's really like, that's, that's amazing. But I, I think that Tim Black put it best in a video. Like, he said he felt like these hearings, like it was a joke, like it was just lip service. It was a pat on the head. I'm, I'm paraphrasing him, of course, and that it wasn't taken seriously. So how do we actually get uh, members of Congress to take these issues seriously and not just say, you know, uh, or signal support to placate, you know, uh, members of the trans community and the black community? Because I feel like these issues, even though we're starting to talk about it, which is an improvement, like I want to actually see real action. So what do you think we can do to advance these issues and also convince leftists who in theory should be the most vocal about reparations and trans rights, but don't seem to be like, what is your take on all of this? It's kind of a loaded question, but no, not really. I mean, listen, I, I listen, and this is crazy that we're having this conversation. I talked to my dad this morning. I told you and he was talking about his grandmother, my great grandmother. And he told me when she was born in Jamaica and I was like, wait a minute. She was a slave. He's like, yeah, she was. My grandma, my great grandmother died when she was like 97. So she was born in the 1800s because my dad is was born in the 40s. And my great grandmother was a slave. My mother left Pasagoula, Mississippi. She, her and my grandmother on my mother's side were sharecroppers in rural Mississippi. She left with my grandmother in 1968 when Martin Luther King was assassinated. So the Jim Crow South that we see about in documentaries and hear about in movies, my mother was 10 years old when she left that. She was spit on as a little girl. She couldn't go to certain places in town. She couldn't go out after dark. She went to segregated schools. So I don't need another hearing or another study. I can walk out of my front door and see the effects of whatever study you're going to talk about in Congress. I don't need another hearing to know that black people in this country are suffering because for 400 years we have been oppressed by our own government. The way we get more eyes to this is to have more people talking about it. And credit to Cori Bush that she is a member of Congress talking about it because HR 40 is just some obscure bill that people like you and me have the luxury of knowing because we're in the realm of politics. But if you're, if you're not in the realm of politics, what the hell does HR 40 mean to you? When your member of Congress comes back and holds town halls on reparations, that's how we move the needle forward. When your member of Congress goes on TV and vociferously demands reparations for black people in this country, that's how we move the ball forward. When your member of Congress is putting forth bill after bill after bill after bill with reparations in it, that's how we move the needle forward. We elect more black people to Congress who aren't millionaires, who don't come from the, the corporate class, who don't come from the elite class. That's how we move reparations forward. My father, I just told you, is Jamaican. My last name is James. James is a British last name. That is not an African last name. So my father's people were slaves. My mother and grandmother were sharecroppers. Their last name, my mother's maiden name is Brown. That is not an African name. That was her slave master's name. And James was my father's slave master's name. I am a product of that wickedness. I am the seventh generation of crimes committed. And if we truly want to ever have equality in this country, we need more people who look like me, who come from the lineage of those descended slaves, to stand up and demand that America make right the wrongs of the last 400 years. We have a member of Congress who is a black woman in a district that's 50% African American, mostly Caribbean, and isn't saying a damn thing about reparations which is almost criminal in my opinion. That's how we move the ball forward on those things. Yeah, I, I don't understand how there's not greater urgency because it's not just like black Americans don't have a lot of wealth in this country. What little wealth they have is diminishing. So I just, I don't understand how we can ever have an equitable society without being serious and having a conversation about this. And also, you know, getting left wing allies to acknowledge the importance of this issue, that it's not just a social justice issue. It's an economic issue. It's a legal issue. It's an issue that I feel like everyone 
who's on the left, who's progressive, who's radical, should be on board with no questions asked. Um, I so mean, it's Black History Month, right? Every yeah. black representative in Congress should have been beating the drums about reparations this month. You want to talk about black history and our contribution to this country, to American history. Well, let's talk about making right the wrongs of the last 400 years. Let's talk about that. The White House that Joe Biden is now in, when it was burnt down by the British, it was rebuilt by black slaves in this country. They rebuilt the seat of power in this damn country. And nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about making right the wrongs, making generations whole. Generational wealth wasn't just kept from us. It was stolen from us. Our language, our heritage, our culture, our religion, our even our identity was taken from us. And then you leave us to fend for ourselves. You make everything we do a crime with, with the black codes, first of all, with Jim Crow slavery, with, with the war on drugs, with the crime bill, and you don't see the harm that you have caused. We talk every year about 9-11, how we should never forget it. We talk about the Holocaust and how we should never forget it. Black people have had a 400-year Holocaust in this country, and it seems like everybody has forgotten it, except those of people like me or you who have time to think about it. And we have never been made whole from this. Communities were destroyed by Joseph R. Biden. That's why I, I wrote in Bernie Sanders. He gave us the crime bill, which which was Ronald Ray, was was Reagan's war on drugs and Nixon's war on drugs cranked up to eleven. That's what made the mandatory minimums. That's what made the harsher sentences for crack. That's what literally took fathers out of homes and destroyed families, destroyed the nuclear family that Republicans love to talk about. The black people don't have a nuclear family. Well, why is that? Because a generation of men, an entire generation, were put in jail and left to rot like grapes on the vine. And America needs to atone for her sins. And we can do that with government if we have people in government who actually want to do that. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.